Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. In this video, I am going to describe ECC, that is extra capsular cataract extraction with just two sutures. I remember in 1995 when I started ECC, extra capsular cataract extraction, I used to cut along the limbus for about one centimeter yes for about 10 millimeter incis heart cataracts and remove the cataract in total i had to put about seven to eight interrupted sutures or a continuous shoeless suture to close that wound today i will show you that such a big incision can be closed just by two sutures. By this time we have applied a superior rectus brittle suture and we have made conjunctible peritomy for about four clock hours from 10 o'clock to two o'clock. So this is about 12 millimeter peritomy. One clock hour is equal to almost equal to three millimeter. So four clock hours means about 12 millimeter. We are going to use about three clock hours or three and a half clock hour sensation and here it is. This is about three to three point five millimeter. This is about two millimeter. This is about three point five millimeter. So this is about nine millimeter incision and I'm going to make a sclerocorneal tunnel as we do in small incision cataract surgery. This is a large incision so I will call it ECC extra capsular cataract extraction and since I am putting it sutures I will call it uh, ECC. But this is not the same ECC that we used to do in late 90s. So this can be called modified ECC. I have taken some steps from SICS and some steps from ECC. Like we used to put sutures. So since we are going to put sutures in this large wound, it is ECC but not so many sutures as we used to put in conventional ECC where we used to make a large wound along the limbus. Sclerocorneal tunnel is made. The inner incision is going to be about 10 millimeter. The outer incision is about 9 millimeter. And we will see that through this large wound, how easily this very hard nucleus comes out. This is a side port at around 9 o'clock or 8.45 o'clock. The anterior capsule is being stained with tripe and blue dye. We had no dye in late 90s. Now we have it. This helps in doing capsulorexis. We used to do can opener capsulotomy in late 90s, in 94, 95, 96 when I used to do ECC. Nowadays we do capsulorexis and place the lens in the bag. At that time we had no idea where the lens goes. It may be in the sulcus one haptic may be in the bag, another haptic in the sulcus, or both haptics in the bag or sulcus, we didn't bother. We used to put a large PMMA intraocular lens just under the iris. But we had very good results because we used to put very beautiful meticulous sutures. Now, let us come to this video again. See, there is some contrast 
which this stripe and blue dye has given and I am going to do a very large capsular excess. It is very important otherwise this huge nucleus will not come out of the capsular bag. So I am putting, I am doing a very large capsular excess maybe about 6 millimeter or 6.25 millimeter. Capsular excess is done and now I inject a bit of visco, increase the intraocular pressure and then open the sclerocorneal tunnel. Lift the anterior all of the sclerocorneal tunnel with a tooth forceps, go to the anterior extreme of the wound and open the wound. Cut when we go forward as we do in SICS so that we get a very nice corneal valve. And now hydrodissection is done and I am trying to prolapse the nucleus by hydrodissection but it did not happen. It is a huge nucleus though the rexis is large it is not enough for this huge nucleus. What to do now? I do hydro for some time, some more time, make the nucleus free. Yes, it is free. It is rotating nicely. And now I inject visco, fill up the anterior chamber with visco. This is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. And now use two hooks and mobilize the nucleus and prolapse the nucleus out of this bag in this way. Just rotating the nucleus and here it is. It comes out and occupies the whole anterior chamber. It should not rub the cornea. So inject some visco between the cornea and the nucleus. Inject some visco behind the nucleus and use this fish hook to deliver this nucleus. And see how easily it comes because the wound is large about 9 or 9.5 millimeter. And now I remove the cortex and the lens matter with the help of this Simcoe cannula. There is some fibrosis in the periphery of the posterior capsule. This will not cause any disturbance in vision. We are having very good red glow. So we hope that the retina is okay. Ultrasonography B scan was done and the retina was attached. There was no ecogenicity in the vitreous cavity. So cortical cleaning and polishing of the posterior capsule is done nicely. Some seals are seen sticking to the posterior capsule at some areas that is nicely removed. And now the capsular bag and the anterior chamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. In this case, I am going to implant a sensor multipiece intraocular lens and it is being placed in the capsular bag. Here it is. No need to fold the lens. The lens goes as it is unfolded, the leading haptic goes into the capsular bag and the trailing haptic also goes into the capsular bag. There was some cortex at 1 o'clock. It has got dislodged and now it comes out. And now two sutures are two interrupted sutures are being placed 
to close this on only two switches one here and the other one here on either side of the straight portion of the wound a little bit of air bubble to form the anterior chamber and now this is on interrupted suture two loops then on loop and then on more and the threads are trimmed and then the knot is buried into the sclera this is another suture these two sutures will be covered by conjunctiva and it will not require any removal in future so this is two loops this is one more and there is another one so this is another two on on interrupted suture the threads are trimmed and then the knot is buried into the sclera though this is a large wound there will be no astigmatism or minimal astigmatism because of these two sutures and now this is another suture to oppose the conjunctiva to the limbus and this is going to be a releasable suture and releasable suture there is three loops and then just pull the just see this okay we'll uh, uh, tie this suture later on we have to remove the visco before that the antechamber is irrigated and then the capsula bag is irrigated irrigation means some bcs is taken in a 10 cc syringe irrigation is already there and through the aspirating port the bcs is flushed so there is irrigation through two ports through the aspiration port also there is irrigation and because of the it is attached to a bottle there is already irrigation and this is the irrigating probe of by manual ia i did some more irrigation to remove all the viscoelastic substance and now this is bit of moxifloxacin the side port is closed by hydrating corneal stroma on either side of this stab incision and then a final lavage of the anterior chamber i am going to ensure that there is no visco in the anterior chamber and just see such a large wound and only two sutures minimal astigmatism or no astigmatism at all because of these two sutures so this is a very good modification of extra capsular cataract extraction this is subconjunctival gentamicin and dexamethasone and now the conjunctiva is opposed to the limbus by a releasable suture 
we will see how the releasable suture is put. Hold this thread, pull the thread and now make three loops. One, two, three. Pull it and just trim the threads. One thread, the thread which you will pull and it will get released. This is, that is kept a little longer. And this, that's it. The case is done. Now let us see these post-op pictures. Cornea is clear, antechamber is quiet, intraocular pressure is 14 millimeter of mercury, unaided visual acuity is 6 by 18 and very little astigmatism. The patient is very happy and this is the safest technique in such hard cataracts. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills and it will help you in managing heart cataracts in your practice.